നമസ്കാരം ഇന്നത്തെ ഇൻ്റർവ്യൂ സീരീസ് ആയിട്ടാണ് മണി ടോക്സിൽ വന്നേക്കണത് നമ്മളോടൊപ്പം ഉള്ളത് പ്രതീക് പന്ത് അദ്ദേഹം വൈ ടോക്കിൻ്റെ ചീഫ് ബിസിനസ് ഓഫീസറാണ് ഇദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് ഇരുപത്തഞ്ച് വർഷത്തേക്കാളും കൂടുതൽ എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് ഉണ്ട് അദ്ദേഹം ഇവൻ നമ്മൾ മലയാളി കമ്മ്യൂണിറ്റിനായിട്ടും വർക്ക് ചെയ്യാനുള്ള ഭാഗ്യം അദ്ദേഹത്തിനുണ്ടായിട്ടുണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ ഇദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ എക്സ്പീരിയൻസിൽ നിന്ന് എങ്ങനെ ഇൻവെസ്റ്റിംഗ് നമ്മളെപ്പോലുള്ള എല്ലാവർക്കും മലയാളികൾസിന് എങ്ങനെ ബെനിഫിറ്റ് ഉണ്ടാക്കുക എന്നുള്ളൊരു കാര്യങ്ങൾ പഠിക്കാൻ വേണ്ടിയിട്ടാണ് ഇദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ ഒപ്പം ഇരുന്നേക്കുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ വെൽക്കം സർ നമസ്കാരം നമസ്കാരം അപ്പോൾ സോ ടുഡേ വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു കണ്ടക്ട് ദ ഇൻ്റർവ്യൂ ഇൻ ഇംഗ്ലീഷിലാണ് നമ്മൾ ഇൻ്റർവ്യൂ ചെയ്യാൻ പോകുന്നത് സാറിൻ്റെ വളരെ സിമ്പിളായിട്ടായിരിക്കും സംസാരിക്കാൻ പോകുന്നത് നമുക്ക് എല്ലാവർക്കും ഒത്തിരി കാര്യങ്ങൾ എങ്ങനെ സേവ് ചെയ്യാമെന്നും എങ്ങനെ ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യാമെന്നും അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ കമ്പനി എങ്ങനെ ഇന്ത്യൻ മാർക്കറ്റിനെ കാണുന്നൊന്നും എല്ലാവരും നമുക്ക് പഠിക്കാൻ പറ്റിയ കാര്യമാണ് അപ്പോൾ സർ വിൽ ബാക്ക് ടു ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ആൻഡ് വിൽ 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 സ്പീക്ക് ഇൻ അവർ സോ നിക്കിൽ ഐസ് ഐ വാസ് ടെലിങ് യു ഐ ഡോണ്ട് സ്പീക്ക് മലയാളം ബട്ട് ഐ ഡു അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് എ ഫെയർ ബേഡ് ബിക്കോസ് ഐ ബീൻ വിത്ത് സം ഓഫ് ദ മോസ്റ്റ് അമേസിംഗ് മലയാളം പീപ്പിൾ വിത്ത് യു നോ ഹു ബീൻ ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ഐ സ്പെൻഡ് എ ഫ്യൂ ഇയേഴ്സ് ഇൻ ദോഹ റൈറ്റ് ഇൻ കത്തർ ആൻഡ് ആൻഡ് ഏർലി ബാക്ക് ഇൻ മൈ കരിയർ you know i st- uh, i was instrumental in setting up a few branches for hsbc bank at that point of time and you know some of the other organizations i worked very closely so love this place always so good to be back in kochi um you know memories of having curry mean at grand hotel <laughs> <laughs> which i discovered yesterday again oh, yeah, so it is, is you know so so this is this is a place which is very very close to my heart okay thank, so thank you, you for having me here <laughs> thank you so much i know that you are a busy person and uh, you have uh, done a, a wonderful career for 25 plus years then you have worked in any dream investment companies uh, be it hsbc abn be it franklin uh, then you have started your own venture uh, then now with uh, white oak and setting up and their operations and offices across india so what is your journey and uh, what you learn about savings and investment uh, you know Uh, uh, from this experience if you could share that that we could be a good start for us nikhil 26 <laughs> years you know talking about it in a few minutes is very difficult but let me uh, let me give you a a little bit of synopsis of that right so uh, yes you know as someone who was born and brought up in bombay right i you are always very close to the lal street as they say right and uh, i remember as an engineering college student in 91 um you know i inherited some amount of portfolio at that point of time so rather than going to engineering college i used to spend a lot more time on dalal street and saw the whole harshad mehta phase right so for people who may not be very familiar that was in a way the boom and bust of the indian capital markets so learned that markets are not one way traffic right you have to have a lot of resilience a lot of patience more importantly you have to be able to find good companies rather than just trying to follow trends and every cycle you see right you will see something which comes up and some new trend which comes up so i learned that lesson very early in life right as as a 18 19 year old okay. i i learned that lesson which has helped me navigate my journey all through uh yeah i mean you know last in and different cycles we've seen we've seen india going through some amazing times we've also seen india going through a time when there was a lot of trouble in the middle when we had to even go in mortgage our gold um you know during during that period to to raise uh, you know the, when you had balance of payment crisis you had an amazing phase of dot com not today which we talk about e-commerce but you know early 2000 and you know, then you had a bust which was there you had global financial crisis and this so what happens is nikhil a lot of times we do get influenced by news you know headlines which are there but then you know over a period of time you will find that booms and busts are parts of these art part of these market cycles but if you have a discipline okay. of being through that market cycle right uh, you know as i said identify good companies identify good managers who can manage your money more importantly have that discipline we do that when we buy a lot of time real estate yes, right yes. or we've done that with gold now yes. you know being in kerala uh, you know which is the largest gold consumer market but sometimes when it comes to equities okay. there people somehow think that equities is all about trading in and out trading and investing are completely two different things okay, right okay. so i mean that's really a little bit of 
synopsis of what I have learned through my experience okay, in, this, okay. in these 25 years, 30 years. Okay, good, good, good to hear. And and uh, you can, you know, uh, kind of uh, your company, uh, White Oak, and uh, you have uh, started as a uh, fund bringing from uh, foreigners to Indian yes. market. Yes. And if you could uh, take us that, you know, what's your company and what sure. you're trying to do, address here, it will be a great. No, great. Thanks. Thanks for that. Um, so the founder of this company is a gentleman called Prashant Khemka, yeah. right? And Prashant is an amazing person. He is, again, you know, he's somebody who was from Bombay, learned the markets very early in his life. Um, you know, went to US to do his MBA and after that, you know, was with this uh, one of the largest investment firm in the world, Goldman Sachs, you know, as again, one of those Indians who made it very big internationally. So he was the chief investment officer for Goldman Sachs for both India and emerging markets. And at the peak of his career, he said, you know, I want to do something back in India, right? He spent time in New York, he was in London. He, he was in Singapore and then he said, you know, want to do something out here. In 2017, he set up Vito Capital, right, with a team of about 10 people at that point. And then over the last five years, the journey has been astounding. Prashant, of course, has known some of the top sovereign funds, you know, in, in Dubai, in Abu Dhabi, in, in Middle East, Europe, uh, university endowments in the US. So when he started, many of them were ready to back him and okay. give money to manage for their India allocation. And that's the journey which we started, where we basically raised money overseas to invest in India. Okay. And now, you know, you would be glad to know in a short period of five years, you know, we've almost managing about 50,000 crores of money, right? And out of this 50,000 crores, 70% of the money is actually given by overseas investors oh, okay. to invest into India. That's good. Yeah. Right? And in the last couple of years, right, we've actually we acquired Yes Bank's mutual fund business and got a mutual fund license. So early in the year, in May, June, we launched our first flexi cap fund on the mutual fund platform. After that, we've launched mid cap, we've launched a tax saver fund. Next month, we are launching a large cap fund. Okay. So our focus has been on running equity funds. We've got probably one of the largest investment teams in the industry. There are 38 members in our investment team. We now almost 400 employees okay. and have offices. Besides India, we've actually got a license now to uh, set up. We, we have an office in Singapore. Uh, we run a local lab business out there. Applying for one in Dubai, you know, shortly you'll see us in DIFC. Uh, we've got off, you know, people who are based in London, in Zurich. And so it's it's one of, you know, those Indian companies which is really going now global okay, uh, okay. to manage investment corpus. Initially, all India focused. Hmm. But three months back, we've also were the first Indian asset management company to have its own emerging, emerging market market. fund which we have actually launched out of our Singapore office. Okay. okay, it's good. And, you know, I think when we uh, talk about you have, uh, you know, worked a lot to bring money from uh, foreign uh, institutions and foreign people to here. Could you uh, take us through that? What is the pitch you use? Why they, uh, what are you telling them? Why they need to come to India and invest in Indian market? Sure, sure. So there are, you know, there are a few things which work when we do this, right? One, of course, has to be the attractiveness of a country. You know, I tell this uh, to a lot of people, uh, Nikhil. Sometimes we Indians are the biggest disbelievers in our story, right? We've got an amazing India story which is happening right now, where our, you know, our demographics are so good, our underlying economics are so good. We've had strong political stability, a democratic institution, which actually is something to cherish when you see what is happening with a lot of other emerging markets which is there. Uh, the consumer story in India is so rock solid, right? What we're seeing today, the resilience of the markets out here is all an outcome of all this, right? And I think more and more people are realizing, right? There has always been this China versus India debate, which mm -hmm. has been there in, you know, Russia and a whole lot of other emerging markets. People are now realizing the strength of the Indian market. And, and you know, earlier we had to do a lot of selling. I think today there are a lot of people who are calling us okay, and then okay. saying, you know, who's the best India manager? Can we actually go in? I mean, if you look at some very simple data, right? The, the weight of India in the emerging market index 
has actually okay. more than doubled in the last five years, right? We we've, we've got the 30 more companies which got added to the emerging market index, the MSCI EM index, in the last one year. So clearly, there is that whole story which is playing out in India. Okay. When you go to many of these large institutional investors, they of course like the demographics and they like the India story, but they are also interested in understanding who's the manager they want to back, right? So it's not someone who just decides to play a trend. So there has to be a very strong investment process in place. So it's not just number of people, but it is, you know, do you have a solid philosophy of buying, you know, great businesses at attractive values? That's what White Oak says, right? Okay. Clearly, how do you define great businesses? Companies have to have strong cash flows, excess return on incremental capital. You know, they have to have businesses which are scalable. They also need to have companies where the execution DNA and the governance framework is very solid. So there is a lot of due diligence done by these institutional investors on understanding how we choose our companies. How do we manage your portfolio, right? When you manage your portfolio, it's not just about the stocks which you buy, but you know, you have to be able to buy stocks from different sectors, which have different styles, so that there is a balanced portfolio approach to the way you manage your investment strategy. So many of these things go into the whole due diligence process, Nikhil. So great macros and great you know, story of India, a solid manager which has you know, a, a good bottom-up uh, process which is there. And then there is a track record which is there of the team. Okay. Right? And they, so that's the type of assessment. So all of this combines into people getting mandates to be able to um, you know, manage some of the large sovereign wealth funds. Okay. And this one, because in, especially we Kerala's, we, we are a uh, lot of people outside. Uh, of and uh, we, <laughs> we have a thinking that, okay, the dollar rate is going up and uh, my money sending here is, uh, you know, True. Uh, all these things. Uh, so compared to a dollar uh, rising in this situation, uh, what is that attractiveness really? Sure. Just thinking about dollar thing. So yeah, if yeah. you can uh, highlight that particular part, it will be helpful for us. Yeah. See, you cannot control country currency depreciation, right? It's linked to more a macro event. Hmm. If your inflation rate is, let's say, 7%, if US inflation is 2%, right? And I'm talking 10-year trends, not no. what is happening no, today, correct, correct, correct. right? But, but over 10 years, that is what it is. Your currency will depreciate five years, uh, sorry, by 5%, mm. you know, over a longer period of time. There may be three, four years when nothing may happen and there will be three, four years when you'll have 10, 15% depreciation, right? Mm. I mean, so it, it just all evens out over a longer period of time. So then you have to see what is the attractiveness of a market to give you local currency, you know, subtract that by 5% mm -hmm. for the cost of dollar depreciation and see what is your dollar return which is there. So for let's say Middle East investors, because their currencies all are pegged to the dollar. Pegged to the dollar. Right? Yeah. Diram, Rial, uh, uh, you know, everything is pegged to a, to a dollar. It is this, you have to see that if Indian markets are giving you 12 to 14% returns on the index, you have a good manager who can outperform this market by another 3, 4%, right? So that means your expectation of markets are 15 to 17%, right? Take 5% away. So you're getting 10 to 12% dollar returns. Hmm. It is very, very difficult to get that type of return over a longer sustained period, right? There are people who look at one year return, somebody made 25, 30%, but that is not longer term, right? There will be another year where you will not have made that type of money. So if you can get double digit dollar returns from an Indian asset class, I think it's a very attractive story. And I think that's where you need to peg yourself rather than being bothered about what happens in the short term? Uh, coming back to the Kerala culture, uh, we have seen that you you have ex must have experienced uh, from your uh, Qatar bank, <laughs> commercial bank of uh, Qatar, that we have attractiveness towards uh, FDs, uh, gold, real estate. And what you as an individual seeing good thing about that type of uh, investment culture and what is the area which is not so good about <laughs> that kind of investment culture? Yeah, yeah. No, so I, it has been the biggest challenge to explain to my friends in the Middle East, even today, so, right, that why should they look outside gold or FDs, mm -hmm. which is there. See, FD is an integral part of an overall portfolio, but you can't have all your money out there. If FDs, you know, you just spoke to me about dollar return, right? So if your FD is going to give you 6-7% return, it hardly 
covers even your inflation cost. Mm. Basically, you know, a hundred dollar invested will be worth hundred dollar even after ten years, right? When you know that there is a solid growth story in India, right? And if you can invest into the growth story of India, the only way you can actually do that is through equities, right? Now, real estate again, you know, and I've I've spent a lot of time, uh, you know, explaining to people about real estate. So the the whole concept about real estate is that real estate can be a great asset class from a capital preservation perspective or you want to live you can live in one house but you can't live in 10 different houses right and again in you know i have looked at lot of people with multiple real estate holdings they always are fascinated about the you know land parcel which make their 10 times returns but they forget about the number of apartments in which they invested where they are not able to even exit the whole thing Right. So there has to be a balance of things in real estate. Again, the, you know, good opportunities can be REITs, right, mm, which, are, okay, which are good rental assets on the commercial side. The important thing which people have to go psyche, you know, is that you don't need to own a physical asset. Right. Today, even in gold, for example, you don't need to physically own gold. You have e-gold, mm. which is available. Right. Some of these things can give you representative you know, on the asset class which is there. Gold is a good value during a crisis time. But gold over longer term periods haven't even given, uh, you know, after taking the dollar depreciation, hasn't given you even single digit returns, right? It's best one to two percent return mm -hmm. in the last 10 years, right? <laughs> I mean, after you take away the cost of depreciation. So if you really have to grow your wealth, you will have to look at uh, the asset class which will give you that type of appreciation and to my mind anything around equities whether it is private equity whether it is public equity right or any other form of equity is this now can you put 100% of your money there no mm -hmm. so you you know you'll have to decide next five years how much money I need mm -hmm. maybe I'll put that aside in fixed deposits right but over five years if I don't need that money right now, let that money compound. Okay. Right. Compounding is a is a Correct. great principle, Nikhil. I've. I I think you need to speak about that. When, huh. when we spoke about you explained uh, uh, how compounding work yeah, in your own way. I think if you could. Uh, no, take so <laughs> Nikhil, compounding I always say is the eighth wonder of the world. Uh, right. We know about the seven wonders, but eighth wonder of the world, which you should experience, is compounding. Right. Compounding is simple. You know they have this thing called rule of seventy two. When does your money double, right? You do 72 divide by that rate of return. You'll So assume you will make 15, 16% return. So your money should double. then typically double in about four and a half years or something. Then the interesting thing is, so let's say you started with $100. Let's take five years here. Uh -huh. So let's say you started with $100, right? Uh -huh. So your $100 should become $200 odd dollars in the next five years. But then the interesting part is that 200 becomes 400 in 10 years. It doesn't become 300, right? The 200 becomes four. Then in 15 years, that 400 becomes 800, 800. <laughs> right? And in 20 years, that 800 becomes 1600. So what you started at 100 in a 20 year cycle, right? And the way we can be sure about something like this working is because we are in India, right? If the same thing was in some other country where the whole macro itself was, you know, in doubt, then it was a very different story. Right, but because the India is such a strong story, the compounding story really plays off very, very well out here, and we've seen that in the past. We will continue to see that in the future. And you know, uh, when we talk about compounding, uh, I just want to uh, take you back to your uh, job when you got and how you started your investing with your first uh, paycheck, and uh, how you started your investing yeah, journey yeah, yeah. when you are. When you are at a very young age. So Nikhil, it was not that I always got it right, right? You yeah. always, as a young, uh, you know, 20 odd year after MBA, uh, you also make a lot of mistakes at that point of time. I remember, uh, you know, I mean, I, I didn't inherit anything, right? So whatever I've done is all self-made. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I did get a small portfolio from my father uh, when he had passed away early. So I, I did start dabbling into the markets, lost a lot of money during the Arshan Mehta scam and and learned through a hard way, you know, that you have to invest into good companies uh, over a period of time. But what I did do is that I very early started systematic investment plans mm -hmm. in mutual funds, okay. right? 
and that helped me build a solid corpus where i could buy my first house in bangalore okay. after that right and then i remember by when i bought my second it was actually when i was in uh, commercial bank of qatar we used to get interest free loans uh-huh. at that point of time uh-huh. right so imagine getting a good interest free loan which helped me put a down payment towards a house i had bought at gurgaon but i didn't realize you know when i when i and that's why when i we were talking about real estate i said when i pulled money out from financial assets to put into real estate uh-huh. it's not that i lost money but the compounding which i could have got from the financial markets could have been significantly higher so my money did double right i let's say bought a house for you know a 1 cr in gurgaon i did sell it at 2 cr but after 10 years my rate of return is in low single digits yeah. right a lot of time people say that double ho gaya no this one you have to slow down and speak that uh, one crore become two crore in, in 10, 10 years. years if in financial asset how? in in financial asset the same thing would have been more than five, would have been almost 5 crores ah yeah. that you know? is now that is something which is very important because normally people will not understand yeah so i did that calculation right mm. i actually bought a house fine i got rental for mm. that mm. and all that stuff but i did all my calculations the same money if you know instead of putting into that lovely dlf house mm. in gurgaon i would have done into you know a mutual fund diversified mutual fund mm. right any mutual fund forget you know abc all mutual funds at that point of time have given anywhere between 15 to 18% annualized return so 1 crore would have become 5 crores in 10 years, 10 years. which just became 2 crores crore. for me correct right बोलने के लिए तो डबल हो गया राइट आई मीन पीपल से राइट बेचा डबल हो गया अरे डबल कितने साल में हुआ या या दैट इज दैट इज दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इवन हियर पीपल आर मेकिंग दैट मिस्टेक बिकॉज़ इक्विटी दे वांट टू सेल इट टुमारो यस बट हियर दे आर रेडी टू वेट फॉर 10 15 इयर्स यू एंड द प्रोसेस यार द द पेन यू नो गो रजिस्ट्रार्स ऑफिस रजिस्टर इट कांटेक्ट सम ब्रोकर हु इज डूइंग दिस देन समबडी विल कम एंड से यू नो दे एक्सेप्ट ओनली दिस मच दिस मच चेक दिस मच दिस थिंग our financial markets are so amazingly evolved right, nikhil in india <laughs> right just press a button you can buy what you have to buy press a button t plus 2 you get money back into your account it's so liquid right it is i mean we we've, we've been through our scams right we've had issues ketan pare share certificates duplicate all that stuff but that is behind us we've got one of the most amazing developed financial markets in the world right not emerging markets in the world i think our markets are so much more evolved um, you know the regulator sebi has put so much emphasis on investor protection to ensure that the rights of investors are protected at all points of time mutual fund is such an efficient tax structure right where you don't get taxed at different points of time you only get taxed when you sell so you can compound and that also you you are able to take you know indexations or a lower tax rate which is mm-hmm. there so i actually believe that you know people at any point of time should think about this okay. not only is that compounding working for you but it is you know hassle free you don't need to be storing documents right. in some safe somewhere or something like that right you can just it's all available on dmat electronic form you have so many advisors today right, right who've gone through proper qualifications who can help you with the entire process so you know trust your investment advisor to give you the right advice and i've seen some amazing people out here in kerala who who you know who, who are truly investor centric okay in in their own process in their journey which is there okay when when it comes to white oak uh, you have uh, uh, af uh, uh, pms then you have a mutual fund mutual also funds. yeah so if i am uh, you know a child who is like a 5 year old could you explain three of this and uh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah yeah a lot of people do ask us this see finally underlying for all these three is equity, equity yeah. right flexi cap matlab you are in large cap mid cap small cap all this so whether you putting into a white oak mutual fund pms aif mm-hmm. you are basically getting equity exposure mutual fund is a starting i mean you can start with 1000 rupees out there right it is a very simple structure we ensure that in a mutual fund any retail investor can come and at the click of a button can put in money out there right so it's a very simple way of starting your journey which is there pms and aif are normally meant for more high net worth individuals right when you have like the minimum threshold for pms 
is 50 lakh rupees. Now, a lot of investors, what happen? They have their own historical equity portfolios, right? Or they like to have equity in their DMAT account, mm -hmm. which is there. So, for a PMS investor, what we do? We open a DMAT account, right? There is a joint broking account. Every buying or selling of shares which happens, happens in the DMAT account of the investor. He's the owner of that. Department. He's the owner of it. But we have the power of attorney to execute on his behalf. So, he pays us an investment management fee to manage his, you know, invest in to manage his portfolio, basically, right? Minimum so 50 lakh. Like yeah, so minimum 50 lakh, but he's given us this. AIF is one level above hmm. where, you know, it is it is meant for investor who can start with one crore, hmm. right? And in that what happens is like a mutual fund, it is in a unitized account, which is there. But typically in AIF, what happens is these are closed ended structures, right? So you have a three year, four year tenure, like mutual fund, there is no end. You can come in and go any point of time. PMS is the same thing. But in, in AIF, there is a closed ended structure. Closed ended means you have a certain time. You have a certain time period. You cannot withdraw before that, hmm. right? So in, in that case, what happens? My own portfolio, I can take a lot more aggressive, exp like I want to buy more of small and mid cap then I can, I actually do that, right? I buy more of small cap or mid cap stocks because I'm able to do that. So typically over a longer period of time, you do tend to slightly do better than what you would do within a PMS or a mutual fund structure okay. out there. So after this uh, uh, three years time or whatever the time, you close down and give the money or you hold it for in no, case market? We close and give the money. At that time, we may have another fund or something you could reinvest into that. Okay. So, for example, if market is not doing good or anything, you hold, wait for it? No, 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 no. So, it's a fixed tenure. Fixed, fixed. At the end of the tenure, we will return back the money to the investor. Okay. He could reinvest into another fund of ours which is open okay. at that point of time. Okay. Or, you know, he could Understood. put it into his bank account. Understood. So, it, it's like a starting point is a mutual fund, then uh, some more uh, higher level yeah. risk to yeah. this one. Uh, PMS then A of yes. this one. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's good. Okay. So uh, then now uh, we have explained all these things. But who is the uh, a person who supposed to get it? Because person could be HNI, but uh, he must have not invested in uh, a mutual fund in his entire life. So, will uh, uh, you invite him to AIF or uh, PMS? What will be the kind see, of uh, situation? See, typically, I am the manufacturer, right? Normally, what we say is you should consult a financial advisor. Okay. It is like a doctor, okay. right? If you have a medical, this thing, will you try doing a self-diagnosis or will you go to a specialist, okay. you know? Similarly, there are specialists for financial products who will look at your overall objective. You know, what is your return expectation? What is the liquidity? What is your risk appetite? Okay, okay. If you are going up and down with the market, right, your own app, you know, you are getting a lot of palpitation because the disadvantage at times of financial market is you get NAV every day. Ah, you know, the value you, of your you, portfolio you, every day. Now you that will see means, what is there inside. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> so in real estate, nobody is doing mark to market. Now, today, you know, this plot which I have in Alua, whether it has gone up or down, you don't do that on your balance sheet every day. Okay. But in equity market, you do that every day. Yeah. So now it all depends on what is your own risk appetite. And depending on that, right, you can start with a mutual fund, right? And then, you know, as you understand these products a little bit more, then you can start putting money into PMS and EIF. Okay, right? okay. Okay, so that's where uh, people... One like, important uh, like, thing always when you put money into equity, please come in with five-year outlook. Okay. Not even three, five-year outlook, right? Oh. You can have volatility in the middle. But over a you know long term, the trajectory is going up because your country is doing well. Mm -hmm. India is going up. Companies in India are doing well. So equity markets over a longer period will do well. Okay. Don't think about it from a one month, three month, five month. That is trading. Okay. That is not investing. I think I think we need to put it in a very straightforward. It's like a it's like a marriage. Huh. You will have a fight, <laughs> but uh, if you are loyal each other, <laughs> oh, you are is, happy. <laughs> this is a great analogy, Nikhil. I haven't heard of this before. Huh? <laughs> no, but you know, I think uh, you know. It's it's uh, you know. I always uh, tell that you no, know, like uh, marriage. Um, uh, 
Uh, people may think that I have a great wife, but uh, I know uh, how is it going on. <laughs> but longer period, things are going good. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, I think, you know, it, it, it's a great thing. So, I think so far, uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, uh, talking to you. And, uh, I, uh, you know, what I like to hear from you is that, that what is that uh, final advice you have for Kerala audience considering that you have seen uh, how we think about money uh, and in, in 25 years you have seen uh, what is your experience of Indian market investing and everything. What is the final advice you have uh, for our uh, audience uh, today? Sure, sure. Uh, Kerala the total mutual fund AUM today is about 44,000 crores. The total bank de deposit base out here is almost six and a half, seven lakh crores. It is among, you know, and Kerala people say, right, literacy rate is 102%. Yeah, yeah, there are more people yeah. who are literate than they exist out here <laughs> because they're all over the world, right? A state with such high literacy, this is an area where they're getting it wrong, right? I'm not saying bank deposits are not good or something like that. It's just that you have to, today, as a percentage of bank deposits, Kerala must be one of the lowest states. I, again, I'm not comparing okay. with equitable type of you know GDP numbers. It is one of the lowest state in terms of penetration of equity out here, right? So, I would think that you know people have to take this journey, right? Uh, it's an asset class which you have to embarrass. You know, you 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 will need to embrace from a shorter term perspective, build up a, a portfolio. Power of compounding, I've always said, will work in your favor, right? Eighth wonder of the world. Uh, have an asset allocation, consultant, financial advisor who will be able to help you understand this much better. Uh, but be open to it, yeah. right? Um, you can start with very, whether it's thousand dollars or you know thousand riyals or thousand rupees. <laughs> you can start wherever you want Correct. to start that journey, right? And that's the advantage which you know financial products offer you today. Okay, okay, thank you so much. And uh, you know, I always have a, a great respect to your your team, especially uh, Prashant sir. Uh, I, I follow him whenever I get an opportunity to watch something in YouTube, and uh, uh, even Ashish sir also uh, from yeah. his Motilal days. I, I kind of follow, and I used to read his. Uh, uh, newsletter also and I have seen uh, many interviews of yours especially for the preparation of this and I have seen the kind of uh, uh, you know uh, knowledge you bring into this one and one thing which I always seen uh, your team uh, I think one constant thing is that uh, you don't really talk much about uh, macros. Uh, you are talking more of uh, stocks. Let us, uh, right? I think your your area is that one. So, you know, we are looking forward the, you know, great, uh, uh, you know, position for you in industry. And you all will help us to, uh, uh, you know, create a lot of wealth for uh, our customers. And as a investors, we sure. also, uh, you know, going to No, do thanks, that. Nikhil. You know, you've raised a very relevant point. They always say, you know, you have to control the controllables. Uh -huh. Nobody can predict, right? It is very good to come on TV and say, Ki, today Fed will do this, today this thing. I don't think anybody knows what is going to happen. What you can control is the type of companies you can invest in. What you can control is understanding longer term story. But you know, will it, like you know, yesterday when I came, it was raining in Kerala, right? Mm -hmm. If you had somebody, you had to ask someone, can you predict that it will rain on the 30th of October in, in uh, Kochi? <laughs> you can never predict that, right? It's mm -hmm. like a flip of coin. Correct, correct. It's very difficult to, not difficult, it's impossible to predict all these things. So that's why our focus is always identifying right companies, building balanced portfolios and helping you know investor wealth journey over a longer period of time yeah. thank, you. thank you very yeah, much thank you. <laughs> thank you sir uh, thank you it's i'm sure that uh, this this discussion uh, definitely add value to our investors and uh, we all will uh, you know next time when you uh, come i think maybe not, not next time maybe in years uh, you will see that uh, uh, that uh, mutual fund penetration or the kind of AEM what Kerala population is having going to be uh, much much higher. Uh, so you know, uh, thank you so much, and this is you know wonderful having a chat with you. Thank you, Namaskar. <laughs> thank you, Namaskar.